we're in the shop today to discuss electrical boxes. Okay, so there is single boxes, double boxes, triples, and four boxes. Um, there's octagon boxes, circular pan boxes, uh, single device uh, boxes that will accept connectors and blank covers for junction boxes and things like that. Um, these boxes right here are all of the boxes that I used in this home. Um, there, it is quite confusing at the hardware store on what to choose, um, but what you can see here is what I've used and I was able to get the whole house built with these uh, in addition to a box just like this that's 4 inch by 4 inch for the stove and the dryer. Um, I don't have one of those here with me right now but um, other than that these are the other variety boxes that I've used. Um, this box here um, has knockouts that you can push out to run connectors into. So this type of box would be used say underneath the sink where I'm going to have a exposed plug box uh, mounted to the inside of the cabinet and not all hidden. That way when the wire comes into it it's going to have a connector that goes into it and the wire is going to have to be protected with a metal jacket or in the wall or hidden in the cabinet. So this is, that is a typical application for this style of box. Um, for every other switch and plug that's in the house that's roughed into a wall, this is the standard box that I use. Um, other than where the GFIs and the washrooms are, I tend to get a little bit deeper um, box. There's one size larger than this, um, it's a single device deep box and that helps you fit this larger GFI into the box. So you can see that it requires more space plus the little bits of wire that would be all in there compared to the uh, thinner profile of a regular plug. So if you can remember when you're doing your wiring, uh, try to get a deep box for um, the GFIs and that will be easier for you to cram the wires back into. So this is the typical setting for a single switch uh, or a single receptacle throughout my house. Um, here for a double, uh, mounts again the same on the side of the 2x4. You have the choice to put screws in the top here, the bottom, and on the inside. So when you step any larger than this double box, say to the triple, you're going to want to make sure you attach this box on both sides. Even with some of the doubles, if the 2x4 that you're connecting to seems a little flimsy, um, build up some blocking here on the other side between the other stud and attach this on both sides so that it is permanently attached from being able to wiggle in the walls. Now, for a 4 switch, you're definitely going to want to do that. Um, this box is capable of holding 4 switches or 4 single devices at once. Um, and if it's at the front door or something like that, it's going to get used. And if you've only got it attached on one side, it's going to, over time, get pushed on too much. So backing on both sides is a necessity. That about covers the single boxes and switches and receptacle style boxes. Uh, just want to move into this octagon box and this pan box. So octagon boxes are typically the size box or this type of box you would use to mount uh, light fixtures. So these are temporary light fixtures. They've got the holes exactly spaced out that these octagon boxes have as well as these pan boxes to fit onto. Now most light fixtures are this exact spacing and configuration. They are meant to go on these two boxes. So if I am mounting this box into the ceiling and I'm able to put it right on the side of the truss and run some screws into it, no problems, and it doesn't uh, affect my location, then this is the style box I'd use. Now, if this, or, or if, if exactly where I want to put the box 
there's a, a floor joist or something like that and I need to bump it over a tiny bit, um, instead I might want to use a pan box. Now it's got a selection of holes that you can knock out of the back to bring the wire into, but it allows you to say mount this right onto the floor joist here and still bring the electrical in beside it, allowing you to get the center location. So let's just say that right here um, is the 2x4 side in my washroom wall where I want to mount a light box. Now when I put this on here, my center is off. Let's just say the center is right here for me to get exactly where I need to. So you can see that I would either have to move this out of the way or I can use a pan box. I would remove um, one of the knockouts. I would fit it with a 3 8 connector to accept the Lumex wire. And you can see that I can mount it to make my box center and I can still bring the electrical in through there. So these are very handy boxes. Uh, another space that they're generally used on is for exteriors, for lights. Um, electricians will just screw these right surface mounted onto the sheeting and uh, bring their holes in through the back there. Um, it is recommended that when you get it into the sheathing that you also get it connected into some solid wood blocking as well, but a lot easier than cutting a giant hole that has to be perfect to fit around this octagon box, or I could just mount this one flush on top, bring my power through, screw this onto the stud. So these are some different boxes that I've used. Uh, to finish the house, if you're doing anything a little more complicated, like uh, conduits and things like that, you're pretty well going to use these kind of same boxes, but with different connectors that go through these holes. So um, I'll discuss those in uh, another segment called connectors, and um, we'll go from there. Uh, just a quick note, whenever you're using an electrical box on an exterior wall, it's very important that you use a poly pan or purchase the selected size poly pan for each of your devices. This poly pan here is for a single device box. Fit it inside, attach it to your stud on the side here. Um, then when they tie the rest of the vapor barrier in, they've got these flaps to tie on and the vapor barrier is technically unbroken and uh, that's how you use those. Here's another one just to show you the different shapes that accepts an octagon box does the same thing so they sell doubles, triples, fours, boxes for stoves, washer dryers, all that stuff so just make sure you buy the select poly pan to fit in behind. Um, if you are in a bind um, you can use 6 mil vapor barrier, the appropriate vapor barrier that you'll be using throughout your house and you can bag behind these, um, cutting yourself a larger flap. It's not as tidy, um, inspectors don't like that, but it is better than nothing if you're in one of those situations. So um, again, you would bring your poly all the way around, your flap would probably be extra large and loose and that's why these are nicer is because they're form fitted right to the box so there's no wrinkles in your vapor barrier when you make your patch together. So um, there you have it. Make sure you use a poly pan when you're next to your walls. Okay, so this is the uh, box I'm gonna use for the light switch. It's identical to the boxes I'm gonna use for the receptacles. I'm just gonna show you a quick review on how to install it. So uh, they've got some holes on the inside so that you can put some screws in on that angle. Um, what I like to do is is put the uh, the ones in at the top here, so and one in the bottom. So stick your box on your line, hold it with your thumb. To drill a handy. That's a firmly mounted receptacle box.
this is an exterior wall where we had the vapor barrier and insulation through it. Um, when you're mounting a receptacle in that wall, it needs to be vapor barrier protected in a sleeve as well. So what I do is, um, this is a poly pan um, made exactly for this size box. Set it in its rough location and uh, put a couple staples in it and then come into here. And this is where those inside mounting screws that you saw earlier come in handy uh, because I could just go inside the box, um, installing it that way rather than having to try to pull the plastic out of the way to get the screws in. And there you have it. Pull the pan in. When the vapor barrier comes back down, I'm able to seal around this creating no air loss between the uh, electrical box and the polypan. Okay, so this is an octagon box. It's meant for lighting and um, has several other uses, but in our case, we're gonna use it to put up our, our rough in for electrical light. So um, here's our indicator point, uh, creating from center to center and center to center. So um, using the same screws as before, Pull up the box on center. Alright, nice and strong. 